Welcome back, everyone, to my playthrough of Football Manager 23. We have just achieved promotion to the Football League, to League 2, where we will play in the fall of 2023. If you haven't seen the first several episodes that got us to this point, pretty exciting stuff, especially the last episode. There's a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning. This particular episode is going to be our focus on what's going to happen for next season, deciding what moves to make in the offseason, and that begins by evaluating the squad that we have. We do have a number of expiring contracts. Uh, Mark Howard, 200000 a year is what he's making. That's about to expire in another month or so. That's going to come off the books. He started the for our first season as our starter, ended up in a backup role, but I feel like we can use one of our young players or pick up somebody on the cheap to be our backup goalkeeper. We're not going to spend 200000 a year on a backup, uh, so he's going to go. Daniel Botang, who really did not feature all that much for us, he played one game last season in uh, the National League, which means he's certainly not going to be featuring as we are now in League Two. Russ Griffiths, uh, another guy who didn't really feature, 30000 a year, did not make a single appearance for us. That's another goalkeeper uh, that will be coming off the books. Marcus Wood made five appearances. Wasn't all that great. Certainly is not up to the level of what we need for a defensive midfielder in League Two, so he's going to go. Uh, Enoch Asante, same deal. 21 years old, young Ghanaian striker, uh, made 14 appearances for us, scored two goals in that time, did a decent job and has some potential, but I just feel like unless we can really re-sign him for a relatively cheap amount and maybe loan him out and wait and see what he does, we're probably not going to hang on to him. But I might at least consider re-signing him if we can do so for a relatively cheap, cheap amount. Ben Tozer is 33 years old. He's uh, certainly not going to get any better. Made 13 appearances for us. Did a decent job, but I just don't see him moving on with us as well. Certainly not for the price that we paid for him. And then we had three loans, and we're going to let all of those loans go ahead and expire. I think we can probably get some better loan options in the next level. So I'm looking now at our squad planner just to see where we might have potential weaknesses that we want to probably address. And I think Paul Mullen's going to continue to be a good player for us. And I think he has proven success in League Two in real life in the past. I have no reason to think he's not going to continue to be successful. We've still got him on contract for another two years at 269, uh, which is a great price for a guy of his abilities. Uh, beyond that, though, not a lot of depth. Rakesh uh, Bingham had some good moments for us this season. Not a great crosser or dribbler. Uh, obviously, he's got the physical abilities there, but I feel like we may see some drop-off in the coming season. Um, we may need to think about at least one new striker. Uh, on the attacking midfield, If we're assuming we're keeping the same tactics, which I think we will, uh, Michael Jacobs, I think maybe we may have overpaid for a little bit um, in the end, but we'll see. I may consider trying to transfer him out and get someone who's a little better suited to that particular role. Center attacking mid, we've got Elliot Lee, who's under contract for another year yet, and I think will be pretty solid in that role. I think we're going to need wingers on both sides, attacking mid left and attacking mid right. I think we're Probably not great. I mean, Jordan Davies did pretty good for us, but he's more naturally suited to the left. Uh, so we may go ahead and go back to playing him over there. Um, but I think the, the higher we get up in these levels, the more we're going to need somebody a little stronger than that. Certainly depth, for sure. Um, this center uh, midfield, box-to-box uh, -box midfielder, we've got Thomas O'Connor. Seems pretty solid there in that role. I think we might be okay there. Defensive midfielder, I think we might want to look at somebody. So we're thinking wings, defensive midfielder. Uh, Declan John, who we signed late in that last season, I think is going to be solid for us on the left side as a fullback. Um, we've got a decent amount of depth here in center back. Um, maybe a right fullback. So there's definitely some places we can improve. And financially, uh, we've got... Committed spending of just under $9 million. So we've got about $4.5 to play with, and obviously we could use some of that 
in the transfer market, but I feel like I'm going to try to pick up a couple of really decent players uh, on loans if I can. I did go ahead and trigger a one-year contract extension uh, that I had available to me with Asante. So we're going to pick him up for 39 k a year for another year. May think about loaning him out and then see how he improves before we decide to try and sign him long-term. Um, so there's our season review. We struggled for much of the season, routinely <laughs> performing subpar, failing to meet targets that we set for themselves. But it was a superb season as we were able to sustain a successful promotion to vindicate those who had tipped them for success before the season kicked off. So some good and some bad as well. Uh, we're going to take a look at, there's our new arrivals. Obviously, Rakesh Bingham in all competitions, 16 goals and 12 assists. Huge, huge signing uh, that we picked him up from Ebb's fleet. Um, that's really kind of the one that stands out the most. But the, the board are very disappointed in that deal uh, due to the transfer fee and the player's salary being on the high side. All right, well, I mean, I don't think we get promotion without him, though. So that's just the way it goes sometimes. We did lose in the final of the FA Trophy. Uh, looks like our reputation is still just two stars. We're regional. That hasn't really changed. We're going to have to move up a lot further. Uh, jersey sales, of course, Paul Mullen is going to be the top jersey sold. Not a lot else really to talk about there. So here we have the player awards. Uh, fans player of the season was Rakish Bingham. Young player of the season, Jonathan Denzei. Uh, signing of the season was Nathan Bishop, our goalkeeper. Uh, doesn't surprise me a bit. Goal of the season goes to Jim, Jim O'Brien. Paul Mullen, top goal scorer. Most player of the match awards actually went to Bingham, which is really fascinating to me. And obviously all of the season top ranking things were the, uh, the first and the best because it was our first season as a team. All right, let's take a look at the expectations for the upcoming years. Uh, by the end of next season, they expect us to finish in the top half. I expect that as well. Honestly, I think the team that we just played the last season with could probably finish in the top half in League 2. But here's the thing. There are four promotion slots out of League 2 into League 1. Three automatic and one by playoffs. That's a big, juicy target. I'd really like to be in that top four. Um, so... Other than that, though, they want us to play defensively solid soccer, play direct soccer or counterattacking soccer. Um, they want us, by the end of next season, to win promotion to League One. I'd be okay with, with that, become an established League One team down the road. Uh, they don't expect us in the five-year plan to get ahead of League One. I honestly feel like we can do better, but I'm not sure that they're going to go along with anything that I might add that might be a little different than that. Um, I say that by 2025, 20, 26, we can at least reach the playoffs. Let's suggest that to them. They're like, no, not going to happen. I think we're just going to have to accept what they're proposing to us here. So this guy here has me intrigued. Um, the numbers aren't really great, but he doesn't... I mean, long shots is a weakness, but uh, he's also on the left side. So he's got really good potential, but I don't need another left winger, I don't think. Um, yeah, I feel like maybe there's just probably better options out there than him. I do have a couple of scouting priorities that I've made right now, specifically looking for that left side full back and the right side uh, inside forward for our attacking midfield. Uh, so we're going to let that play out and see who we can come up with. Now, while this guy might not be our starter for 2023, uh, Marques Muir is intriguing me. He's somebody that our scouts picked up on. Look at his jumping reach, his pace, his strength. Uh, some of the stuff, the composure concerns me a little bit uh, in positioning, but I feel like this is the kind of guy that could develop into a solid player down the road for us. Uh, and he's got a four and a half star potential. He's not making a ton of money right now. Uh, he's at Bristol City. Uh, so we're going to see what it might take in order to pick this guy up. They're going to suggest 400K and then another couple of installments. Uh, I feel like that's 
Oh, that's way more than I really want to pay for a guy like that, I'm afraid. Otherwise, he meets kind of what we're after pretty well. Um, a lot of these guys are all about potential rather than what they can con currently give me. Uh, here's a potential left fullback, 21 years old from Scotland. Uh, who's he playing for right now? He's in Coventry. Okay. He'd be a breakthrough prospect, but he's a guy that, again, we might be able to pick up. All right, so we put a transfer offer in for this guy here, uh, Jack Lancaster. Uh, he's 23 years old. He is a attacking right midfielder. Like I said, even if we've got starters in place, we need some depth. He doesn't really have any real weak spots. He's pretty consistently 12, 13 in all the key areas that we need. Made 50 appearances for Cambridge last year. Played for Ipswich before that. Uh, I think this is the kind of guy that could do really well for us. He was a, a pretty solid League One player, and we're asking him to step into a League Two role now. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do to make this happen. Uh, he wants us to get promotion uh, within the next two years, which I think is a promise I'm willing to make to him. So that's really not a bad salary at all. If that's what he's willing to accept, I would totally accept that. Um, what's his existing contract look like? It's a little less, um, so I think he's going to want more than that. You know what? I'm okay with that. So there's a release clause of a million dollars if somebody else wants to sign him. Relegation release clause. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty, I'm pretty, su pretty set with that. I think I'm good with that contract. It's really not bad. All right, we've also got a loan deal in place for some depth at strike, striker. Oakley Cannoneer is his name. What a name for a striker. Cannoneer. How can you forget that? Uh, so we're going to pick up that 19-year-old striker. Uh, he plays for the Liverpool under-21. So this is a Premier League guy uh, who we are about to pick up on a loan. Uh, and he really could give us some... Something special up there. I mean, look at some of these numbers. He might come in and rival Paul Mullen uh, up there at that striker position. So we're going to take that. There is a recall clause in his contract, but I honestly don't see why they would recall him. Josh Reed, 21-year-old fullback, is going to be our other loan signing that we pick up right away. Uh, gives us some depth there. Not a crazy good player, but I think definitely offers us some depth. So financially, a couple things have happened. Number one, we got 337000 from TV rights for the upcoming season. Uh, we also got $4.5 million injected into the, uh, into the coffers from our chairman, Ryan Reynolds, who just threw a bunch of money at us. Uh, so it looks like Grow the Club's reputation has already passed. So we got a little bit of reputation bump. Uh, that's good. It doesn't really show here because it's still showing us two stars. Uh, but eventually, if we're going to attract those big names as we get promoted up to the championship and then to hopefully the Premier League, we're going to need that reputation to start to grow. Uh, and that's going to require doing well in domestic cup competitions, doing well in our league, things like that. Um, so we're going to join an under-21 league, an under-18 league. Uh, and let's take a look right now. Um, obviously, I think it'll change in a few days with the releases. Um but there's Jack, Lanc Jack Lancaster, who we just signed, who's going to jump right into that starting role and I think do pretty well for us. Okay, one more loan signing that we have picked up from Leeds United on a pretty cheap deal uh, is going to be Alfie McElmont, who is in, from Northern Ireland. And uh, again, uh, pretty decent stats here. A couple of weak spots, but not bad all, all in all. Three and a half stars. Compared to the others, a lot of pros, not a lot of cons. It's not great with heading, but we're not asking him to be good at heading. Uh, so we're just going to ask him to be some of our depth. Now, we do have this one issue in that it appears that Paul Mullen and Elliot Lee don't work particularly well together. Um, I do want to take a look at this other tactic that we have been training on. Uh, and it looks like we could put them side by side. Um, but I'm curious to see about what Cannoneer can offer us. Uh, he's only 19, so he may be better suited to like a squad depth coming off the bench kind of thing. Uh, but we may need to think about maybe going to this wingback role, um, or this wingback tactic, though 
it definitely gives us some weak spots there. Otherwise, the other alternative is we may be in a situation where we have to think about moving on from Elliot Lee. I don't know. All right, I've made a big splash, and uh, now we've got to figure out a tactic that's going to work with two strikers because we've got Paul Mullen and now this guy, Charlie Wyke, I guess is his name. Wick, maybe. He's 30 years old. Uh, he played for Wigan last year, uh, made 28 appearances, scored eight goals, had 34 goals in 94 appearances for Sunderland. So this is definitely a guy who is really good for League Two, and I, f I feel like could really – set the league on fire for us. He's got some good numbers. His heading's phenomenal. Strength is really good. Good teamwork. He's good off the ball. I feel like other than his first touch, he's got some solid stats here. Now we've got to figure out a way. We're going to pay him a half a million a year. Uh, so our budget is getting up there. We're at six, 11 and a half million. We've still got about 2 million to play with, but I don't want to be pushing up to that. I need to leave some room for any potential signings we need to make during the year. So we've got to th start thinking about something, maybe even like a 4-4-2, where we can get Wick and Mullen up there at the same time and use them both to their strengths. Time to choose our captain and uh, vice captain uh, for the season. It's going to be Jonathan Denzei, the uh, center defender. 15 in leadership, 13 in teamwork. Excellent stats. Declan John's going to be our vice captain. And we are ready to dive in to the season. Uh, we're just a couple of days away from our first event, which is going to be Hartlepool. Skybet League 2. We easily won all of our friendlies. Now, granted, we weren't playing anybody that great. But uh, with minimal changes to the team, I am pretty dang excited about our squad. Oakley Cannoneer had a perfect 10 rating and a hat trick in our first uh friendly that we did he scored again in the next one uh scored another hat trick against lex and then finally did not score in the match against anon but uh, i'm excited about our ability here we just got to see if this um, strategy that we're coming up with this new tactic is going to work for us all right we're going to try this 442 strategy and see how it works it's uh Bit of a gamble, but we've got a whole new squad here, and uh, the tactical familiarity is pretty poor, especially in our midfield on this. Uh, but we're hoping we can rely on these two fantastic strikers we've got up front, as well as Cannoneer coming off the bench. We'll definitely get him in there to see some action. Let's see what happens. Our first match of the season. Going up against Hartlepool. Our first match in the Football League, League Two. I feel like we've got good chances here. Let's see what happens. We are playing a cautious mentality to start. Possession pretty even thus far. We've had a shot, but no, nothing on target. Odessina has already picked up a yellow card. That's something that makes me a little bit nervous. I don't know why they're suggesting that I already put Cannoneer in for Wick, but oh, he's hurt. Are you kidding me? Oh, right off the bat, we've got an injury, and we're going to have to bring in Cannoneer off the bench. We're going to make him in an attack mode there. Let's see what happens. Mm, hate to see that. I hope it's not a bad injury. 50-50 on possession. They've had three shots, but nothing to show for it. We may have to get a little more aggressive in the second half. But here comes Cannoneer. No. Nope. Goes right back to Hartlepool. Oh, man. How did he get wide open? Thankfully, we picked it up. Pretty quiet first half for us so far. Well, of course, remember last season, our very first match, we get Paul Mullen with a red card. So it didn't start out well then either. Lancaster, one of our new players. He's weaving his way in. He's going to drop it off to Hayden. Can we make something happen? Get it into one of those strikers in the middle there. That's what we need to do. Macklemont, another new player. Lancaster. Oh, look at him get clear. And then he blows the shot. I like what I see from him there, though. We just got to find better options with the ball. All right. 
It's a pretty even start. They've had more shots than us. I think we're going to have to get a little more aggressive. Didn't help that we lost our striker right off the bat. Again, hoping it's not too bad. All right, we're going to go long to Cannoneer. He's going to try to get it in. Over to O'Connor, to Jacobs. Back to Cannoneer, nowhere to go with it. He's going to drop it in. Oh, it goes off the post. Oh, but we got it back. Lancaster. Paul Mullen uh, couldn't, couldn't hang on to it. Pretty exciting first 30 seconds of the half. Man. We do have two yellow cards. We have to be a little cautious there. Don't want to pick up a red. All right, we're at 60 minutes now. I think we're going to go ahead and take a look at any potential subs we want to, might want to make here. Everybody's doing okay so far. I don't know why they're all overwhelmed by the feedback. Declan John not having a fantastic game. Uh, let's get Miles Kenlock in there for him. Just need a goal, boys. Just need a goal. Neither team has had a shot on target yet. Ah! Uh, not liking this. All right, defense Defense is playing solid here. Nice job, O'Connor. Cannoneer just whips it out there to nobody in particular. Young player. He's going to make mistakes. All right, we're out on the wing. Oh, there goes Lancaster, but Cannoneer just can't. Oh, he did run it down. Way to win the ball, buddy. Was that off the crossbar? Are you kidding me with this? The woodwork has not been our friend so far. Ken Locke, our substitution, again, just whips it in there to nobody in particular. But Cannoneer's going to get it. There goes Lancaster. It's up to Paul Mullen. Can he score? Yes! Beautiful. Just a tap in on the left side past the outstretched arms of the keeper. Let's watch that one again. Starts with Cannoneer back to Lancaster. who's going to just chip it up to Mullen, and Mullen... Knows how to finish. Two defenders right on him. Keeper couldn't make it happen. Now, let's see if we can hang on. Oh, boy. Nice stop, Bishop. Love that guy. Solid player. All right, we need to take a look at subs again. We're in the 77th minute now. And I think Ton of Cliff's going to come in for a tired captain. I think that's probably the only sub we need to make for now. Just need to hang on. Would like to get a second goal, though. Thankfully, our back line's been pretty solid so far. Oh, there goes Cannoneer. I'd love to see him get his first goal, but instead he's going to drop it back to Ken Locke over to Jacobs, who's trying to get cleared or get the cross, but can't do it. Lancaster controls it, but then loses it. We're trying to get Denzayi out there so we can get some fresh legs in. Oh, bad pass. Real bad pass, and now they're making a run. We've got tired legs back there. Poor choice for a shot. All right. Not crazy about the start, but then again, we did lose one of our new signings, our striker, right in the first minutes of the game. And Cannoneer's just going to boom one down to Mullen. He's got a runner on the right side. Couldn't get it to him. Mullen, not a great shot. We've had some poor shot selection. We might have to take a look at our strategy where that's concerned, but the time is ticking away here. Oh, no. Stay on him. No. Oh, boy. And there's the whistle. We win our first match in League Two. Pretty happy with that. I think Cannoneer is going to be best served coming off the bench, though. Hopefully the injury is not too bad. All right, this one's going to be tough for us. We are playing in the first round of the Carabao Cup, and we have drawn a pretty tough opponent. We're actually playing Middlesbrough, which is a championship club. So they're two levels ahead of us on the pyramid. I don't expect much, especially with a new tactic and some new players. 
Um, so I'm not entirely sure what's really going to happen here. Uh, we're just going to pick the unpicked positions. There we go. So we can fill out our roster. But uh, at least maybe we're going to get to see our new striker actually play and make it through the game. He was injured for like three days. Uh, so he probably didn't train much this week, but he is back. But we'll see how we stack up against a championship squad. We are playing a defensive mentality here because we're going to struggle. I expect we will. I'm only getting about a third of the possession right now. But we do have two shots, three shots now. Nothing on goal. But man, would I love to see us just be competitive. If we can be competitive against Middlesbrough, I'm going to feel really good about our season moving ahead here. Pretty quiet first half, really. They've had two shots on target, though. And they're, they're up 72% possession, 92% passes completed. They're pretty much having their way with us. But a, a scoreless first half in the books. All right, let's take a look uh, in terms of how everybody's feeling here. I think we're going to... No, maybe we won't do that yet. Let's go ahead and keep keep the existing squad in there a little while longer. Fascinating. We're go we're not getting blown out of the stadium, that's for sure. All right, we'll see if Middlesbrough is going to be able to make a run here. First chance to actually see the gameplay between these two squads. We've pretty much parked the bus on them, so it's making it difficult for them to get any real options here. Declan John. I'm going to drop it back to Nathan Bishop. Back over to John. Let's see if we can play out the back and make something happen here. Switching the play by Jacobs. Hayden, just nowhere to go with it. Oh, and Dezay just gave it up way too cheaply. But Bishop's right there. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do here. Uh, we do have Rakesh Bingham available to us off the bench. We also have, of course, Oakley Cannoneer. Uh, might be a time to get Cannoneer in there for Paul Mullen. Let's sit him for a little while now. Um, but he's better off as a poacher. Let's get Jordan Davies in there. Uh, honestly, he's better off on that side, but then we'd have to replace Macklemon as well. Who can we replace him with? Tom Carroll? Eh, not really. Yeah, you know what? Let's make it happen anyway. I know that's not his ideal position. But I'm trying to switch things up, see if we can't get a little spark here. Though I'm perfectly happy to let this stay nil-nil. Still no shots on target for us. Alright, here we go. They've got a... Got the ball near midfield. All right, all right. Ah, nice way to get it back. No, oh, huge mistake. Gave it to him in the box. Oh, played so well to give it up like that. Look at that. We steal the ball right here. O'Connor to Odesina, over to Jordan Davies, back to Odesina, who just bounces it right off of their player. And Akpom puts it in. That was too easy. Way too easy. Well, now, unfortunately, we can't really play defensive. We've got to start pushing forward here and attacking. Which means either we get a chance for a goal or we start making mistakes and we give up two or three more. You see this happen a lot. To Carroll, over to O'Connor. Oh, yo! <laughs> what? Let's drop back to Cautious now. Holy cow! Now they made a mistake. And we made him pay. It starts with Wick. I'm going to call him Wick. I don't know if it's Wick or Wyke. Over to Carroll. To O'Connor, who pauses and then takes the shot. Wow! And we are right back in this. Going to bring in Elliot Lee for Wick now. Which is great unless this thing goes to penalties, which I don't think it does. 
All right, they're going to have a free kick in a dangerous spot. Got it out of there. Wow. We are almost at 90 minutes. And that's it. Will this be a replay? Or is this going to go to extra time? I'm not entirely sure how the rules work for the Carabao Cup. Or if it's something that has to be agreed to ahead of time by the teams. But that should be full time. Waiting for the ref to blow the whistle here. Oh, don't give them one more chance. Don't give them one more chance. Please don't blow this at the last minute, guys. Please don't. Wow. That should be it. Oh, they got a corner. Oh, my goodness. This is nuts. Don't blow it, guys. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. All right. Blow the whistle. What are you waiting on? Penalties, and we took all of our starting. Uh, this is where we're in trouble, though, because we don't have our best players in there. But listen, we, we got nothing to lose here. We weren't supposed to be in this game in the first place. We're playing a championship club. Rakesh Bingham's going to put his home. We don't have any of our three best strikers in here for this. So it's really going to come down to, oh, uh, no. Can we get a few stops? Elliot Lee's going to be up next. Come on, Bishop. Get us a stop. Get us a stop. Oh, he guessed right, but couldn't get his hands on it. I was not expecting something so intense to happen in the first episode of a new season. The home crowd goes nuts. We're still in this thing. We just need a stop, and we might pull the upset. <sighs> Guessed right, but again, couldn't get his hands on it. All right, we're, we're getting down, scraping the bottom of the barrel here now as far as our shooters. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Cannoneer. The kid, the young kid comes in for shot number five. Wow, that was close. That was really close. I thought he got his hands on it. Come on, Bishop. Get a stop, buddy. Get a stop. Declan John, we're on our fullbacks now. He just tapped it in. The keeper didn't even move. He just watched it. He just watched it go in. Okay, here we go. This is crazy. This is crazy. Ah! <laughs> he kicked it right at him. The upset. We are on to the second round of the Carabao Cup. Unbelievable upset. We had no business winning that match, and we did. Didn't even have any of our strikers in. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. FTH, or FTH, VTH FC advanced to the second round on penalties after a 1-1 draw with Middlesbrough at the race course. Holy cow. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, I think we'll attend this press conference. All right, let's kick this one off. Not many people were predicting that outcome before the game, but you took them all the way to penalty kicks and got the win. You must be delighted 
with that result. The players worked their tails off and kept their nerve when it mattered. They are all heroes today. We're going to praise our players for that. Um, that was a real back from the dead performance out there. What did you make of the stirring victory from behind? Uh, let's see. I'm absolutely ecstatic. It was a fantastic effort by the players. Yeah, we're going to build up the players every chance we get. We're in the hat for the next round. How far can you go in the competition? We'll take it one game at a time, but we're confident. Uh, was that part of your game plan? If you don't do anything with the ball, you might as well not have it. We've been drilled to make the absolute most of the occasions. All right. Um, many fans voiced their displeasure that Jonathan Dinze wasn't substituted after his poor for performance. Um, it's none of their business. Yeah, get over it. All right, I'm not going to storm out. Um, I didn't think there was a reason to replace him. All right. The press conference did not go well. All right. Whatever, guys, whatever. All right, so let's see who we're going to get in the second round draw of the Carabao Cup. We know whoever it is, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, how many teams are left at this point? Are we still at... Oh, gosh, there's a lot. So let's draw them all. Who do we get? We got Salford this time. So a League Two team in round two. That's more like it. Piece of cake after Middlesbrough, right? All right, well, never say never. We're going to be playing on the road this time. Anything can happen. All right, we're going to go ahead and watch this one next match here, and then uh, we'll probably I will play through some of the season off camera, so to speak. We might even think about starting maybe to play some of these on Twitch. Maybe I'll stream live while I'm playing through the season. And then we'll post the highlights here on YouTube. Uh, we'll see. But uh, so far, looking all right. We are playing cautious. I might have to get a little more aggressive uh, as we go along here. In fact, I might go ahead and switch to positive now. I feel like there's no reason we shouldn't be. All right, we're going to get a throw in here from Hayden. And the Lancaster over to Macklemont. Into Mullen. Declan John's going to be there to recover that. And he's going to try to get up there and get a cross in. A little too much. Did that go off of one of them? I guess it didn't. It's going to be a goal kick. Six shots. Nothing on target. But we've definitely at least seen some action down there. I'm going to go ahead and go to attacking. I'm going to get get pretty aggressive here. They've only had two shots. I just got to find a way to finish. All right, Declan John's going to throw this one into Wick. Back to John. Over to Odessina. To nobody in particular. I've had a lot of those passes out of the back lately. I think we need to find some better passers. And our center defenders. Oh, boy. He's going to switch the field over to Wick, who heads it, but nowhere to go with it. Oh, boy. That was too easy. I was hoping for an offside flag, but it doesn't look like we're going to get it. That was a nice run. A real nice run there. Maybe we got a little too aggressive. Played up too much. Oh boy, they've got a free kick in a dangerous spot here. Oh, and it goes off the crossbar. Might be a little let down after that exciting win over Middlesbrough right now. All right, let's think about getting Cannoneer in there. We're going to get him in for Wick. Try to get some fresh legs up front. Going to be dropping mid-table here if we can't pick up a goal. All right, I want to take a look and see if there's anybody else. Oh, yeah, Denze. He's having a hard time staying in games. He's getting tired too easily. 
They just made three more subs. All right, we're going to have to get aggressive here. We're almost out of time. Just couldn't make anything happen. We had 13 shots. Nothing to show for it. All right, we're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.